Hello SGD, this is the Greater Saxawaman site and we're looking at the quarry sites in particular. So here's those sawtoothed walls that get the attention. Uh, I'll, list, I'll put the playlist uh, showing other elements, you know, how it was, the whole place was lined, multiple lines of defence, but essentially a fortress. Uh, sorry, I've got Penelope, the next door neighbour's Dalmatian is um, going off at the moment, but so there's the site and we'll look at the quarry site. So again, we've got the sawtoothed walls and it's this middle section, which I've highlighted there, which gets the most attention. Uh, well, look at the rest of the quarry. So these are some very important, very nearby sites. Um, and we'll, you'll often hear this is andesite that was brought up mountains from 35 miles away. It's a comment that I've got and you see it all the time. This is just not true. It is locally sourced limestone. And when I say locally sourced, I mean very, very locally sourced. So you can see from the very center over to this site here is three quarters of a mile, one and a quarter kilometer. And so just within this small area, we, there's many sites and I'll just be looking at these. Now, just to highlight again where that the uh, most famous part of the fortress site is there. Zoom in on this area in the red uh, rectangle. So again, you can see the sawtoothed walls. Okay, and but to begin with, the stone with which this is built is the local stone, and is even bedrock still on the site. So before it was cleaned up, to clean it up, prepare the site, there was no shortage of stone. Uh, around there. So where was the quarry? Well, you've, at least part of it, the quarry is the site itself. So the stone just had to be rolled a very short distance to get to its final location. Uh, I'll, I'll come back in a moment, but uh, there's a focus on on the size of the stones as well. And well, the, most of it is not those uh, megaliths. And in the next part, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the moving, show examples of primitive moving techniques and look at the larger of a mega lifts but most of it is stones that are uh, under 100 kilos 220 pounds maybe 200 kilos so 440 pounds a few are uh, pushing for a ton that is what defines the site so most of those photos presentations show a small handful of mega lifts but we'll go that's in the next part but so there you can see that outcrop. So there's plenty of, the site itself is made of the stone upon which it is built. So the quarry it's, itself is the site. Just nearby, uh, you can get these like from, again you can see the stone. And so there's a lot of stone within 200 meters. And there's a smaller spot highlighted there. There's the view, and that is not even half a kilometre, not even one third of a mile away. And so from here, you can even see a section of a sort uh, of the walls itself. Those last photos that I showed, these ones here from this area, well, you can see them there. So there's lots and lots of stone just waiting to be sourced and quarried and brought to the site, not even a third of a mile, not even half a kilometre. So when we have the furthest areas, one point, uh, one and a quarter kilometres, three quarters of a mile at its furthest, and we'll look at those photos now. But before we go any further, consider the size of the stone. So this is a typical photo, and these two stones here, these are the ones that you know you see always, and you think, oh, the whole site is made of these. Well, it's there are perhaps a dozen of each, I'll, I'll go through, I'll show you where they are for them. Even, these are on the lowest tier, the lowest tier has the larger stones, but even on the lowest tier, these are rarities, these are exceptions, um, not the rule of the lowest site. So, for instance, if you go just a little bit either side of that central part, you can see now the lower tier with the larger stones, it's now you're talking a different ball game. So, lowest tier, this is the defining, you know, there are those few exceptions, but this is what defines the lowest tier. 
but then the second and the third tier V stones are easily manageable by people even without uh, levers. Some of them, you know, well, one or two pe people with a lever could easily manage V stones, and this is what defines the site. And next part will be about the how many mega lifts are there, and uh, where are they on the site, and then we'll do comparison. So now I want to focus on this particular. Uh, area here and so again now we can see Cusco in the distance and uh, one of the quarrying sites so this when you think of quarry people now imagine those modern quarries with a deep big deep pit and all perfectly cut platforms and stuff uh, this was even in the, the western world uh, rock fall exposed quarries were what people usually quarried when there's a big outcrop why go to the effort to, unless you want really big homogenous blocks, you don't dig, you know, a, a big pit, you, the stone's just sitting there waiting to be used. And so here's another close up, again you can see that particular site, but it's, the stone is just all over the place, boulders just waiting to be collected. This is, the, you know, where is the quarry? Well, the, the quarry is on the site, and the quarry is all around the site, and there's no shortage of stone. Here's another view of that uh, angle, but I'm going to focus in and highlight that particular part because you can see that the stone is naturally fractured, ruptured. We have those uh, bedding planes or strata that are there. Uh, the, half the work is done for you, it's just now a matter of finding the loose rock and levering it out. Uh, this would be you know, a classic example, you know, chisel, you know, bang out the corner and then you have a nice block exposed, ready to go. Here we have another piece, and so this would be very much like the uh, giant monolith next to the gate, and well the crack is already there to do, so you don't, where is the quarry site? It's not this pristine site, they're just all over the joint, these types of stones. Every time I show a photo, I just look in the background and there's this stone that's waiting to go. There's a bit of uh, peridelia, look, there's a jaguar face, okay, but um, just waiting to go. Again, here's a nice big block, you dig around, trench it out, remove that loose uh, rock around it, ready to go. I also kept this one because it could be, but it sort of has this, um, almost as if it's been pl plug and feathered, that it's been split, but it could be... Uh, a natural feature to see. This is an interesting one because this would be a common thing that you'll see around this and what we have is these holes that have been removed and I'm looking, some of them are horizontal, some of them are vertical, some of them seem to be at an angle and I would think uh, that these are post holes. You know, so once you want to move the block, wedge it out, uh, just well, very easy work to do once you've got a bit of leverage and rope. Here's a very interesting section. And we zoom in on this part and you see there's all these stones just you know the, the cracks and they're just waiting you know a good lever uh, pop them out roll them down and away you go and these sites are level with or above the Saxe Waman site so it's not, not this oh, how did they get them up mountains no it's just not the case okay uh, now that one okay, I'll bring this up in a, in a moment what do we have for I'll show this in another photo, but this is, a, we have some earthworks there, essentially a, a ramp or a working platform. Again, now same place, but just a little bit over, but again we see that there's a lot of information from these uh, photos. And so the strata line, these are all, and these are running throughout, I'm just highlighting these, these are running throughout, vertical, horizontal cracks, just waiting for you to take advantage of them as quarry in ancient Egypt you can see in Aswan where they took advantage of the natural cracks again this is limestone not granite so copper tools perfectly fine Peruvian copper high in arsenic like Egyptian copper which makes it arsenical either a cynical copper or bronze so very good tool to use for, for these tools and again just the, the cracks that are running throughout just it's stone waiting to be plucked zoom in on this particular piece what do we see here well uh, one of the reasons for polygonal blocks rather than rectangular blocks is it, it, well 
it's done for you. You just got to shape the stones, um, and it's much less work to square them off than it is to polygonally fit them. So I compare that to this section, for instance. Zoom in on that one. Compare those, and you can see how by using these natural cracks and the blocks, which are just given to you by nature, you already have a lot of the work done with polygonal type of stone. Zoom in again, now you see a working platform, uh, ramps, you know, to help you get and move and, and fill up, or maybe there's a small gully or ravine and you want to roll the block over, well, just uh, the rubble and the loose stone, which is already there, perfect tool, it's already there, doesn't cost you anything. Then we have that section, we zoom in, you can see that the rock seems to have been already worked and possibly, you know, we've got a place to roll them down and get them down to the ground. Again, why not just use, these blocks are already there, they're already polygonal in that sense. And so this top corner, now it's, um, okay, we have a crack. So this block just waiting to be extracted. This one, uh, wall sections, we see shape, you know, that matches the shape. Uh, previous video I showed the, did a tour of wall sections and showed how the incomplete parts where it's yeah it just fits in with that earlier video and so these two blocks seem to be you know fitting in very perfect very nicely and if you look up close there seems to have been tool marks there that this has already been worked to a certain extent and underneath it well that's a nice block ready to go just the whole area is just perfectly for that polygonal type of work. Um, the natural cracks and, well, if you want to do, if it's already perfectly fit, then you just got to polish it up a little bit, grind it down, and you get to fit really well. Uh, again, just, just take advantage of what nature's already given you, the, the, the cracks and the, the complete breaks in between. Here's an example of one of those holes from slightly different, so it's not a tube drill because it's so irregular. Um, probably, you know, another chipped out or whatever, but it, this will be good for a post hole for a variety of reasons. Here's another little outcrop of rock. Again, in the background, there's another, you know, it, it's just so much stone waiting for to just to be exploited here. It's remarkable. Um, you can see the, the bedding planes or the strata that's just waiting to be cracked already. You can see how they run the different angles. So compare those to the to rig the standard block, um, Saxo Weimar or Alante Tambo or Machu Picchu. Uh, just the work is mostly done for you. It's now just a matter of dressing it up, and because those blocks have got the same shape because they were cracked along those lines, it's it's already done. Zoom in. So again, you can just see that section. Just already the natural. It's done. Another view of that particular outcrop. Uh, I'll show again later, but we have again these layers, and so there's these orange streaks running through there. Um, but that tends to be on planes as well, so you can see how this has been broken off, and then it's got the more nice grey limestone underneath. You could just chip, but you can see these pieces are just sitting like a layer ready to be chipped and broken away quite cleanly and easily. You have a lot of these sort of stone terracing into there. Um, I'm not sure whether they well, were quite all well dressed up later and used for some, but you know, there's benches and uh, all these type of things, I'm not sure. But um, I think they were because there's so much stone just already quarried for you by nature that to, to cut them out in that sense it seems you know, not too much work considering that so much already has been done for you. Uh, more examples of possibly natural, but again, uh, post holes, you know, put a post in using, you know, wood levers and uh, rope. Here's a quite a large one, and again, you can see how it goes down, and there's that layer in the rock. There's, you know, so the rock's roughly one and a half, so about half a metre thick, and then it hits another type of strata plane. Uh, this one's interesting because I'm not exactly sure what's going on, but we sort of seem to have these destroyations, but they ended that line there, so I think maybe it's more of a, something else is happening. But again, just all these cracks running through here, the work's done. Um, 
just these channels that are also carved in maybe to move the stone down maybe for your for drainage I'm not sure just showing those well, again just like yeah it's it's there it's it's done done for you already by nature just these outcrops just and stones ready to go um, everywhere the whole site's a perfect quarry we see a these um, areas being carved out got two post holes there and they seem to be vertical so could be for manipulating the stone maybe because there's sort of a dispense little and they have two post holes and a shade cloth over the top I'm not sure again just for that polygonal work it's just everywhere already done for you So this one, so again with uh, planes where you can see it's, and, and especially this one, this is basically the thickness of the walls there. So that's probably one of nature has defined how, how it's, yeah, it's all done for you. You can even see um, where it's sort of more clean, is it the word homogenous blocks, but still we see these places where it'd be easy to naturally crack them. Uh, seems to be a post hole type thing there as well. Again, just, yeah, uh, what more can you say? Uh, partially carved out block, and this one as well seems to again match those corner pieces as well. So it could have been there was a block on top, because um, why, again, I'm thinking, why would you go to the effort of carving those out, chipping those out, when, you know, in outcrops like this, they're just, nature is just handing them to you on a platter. Again, more of these natural or um, man-made, but again, you can see these planes that are in the stone itself. It works easy to do, you know, to get these out. Um, we have these, what would you call them, cans, the stone piles. I don't know whether they're modern or whether they go back to uh, the original time. Again, an overview. They just, the boulders are just strewn on the ground waiting to be collected the cracks of air waiting to be split the perfect size all ready to go um, also these more vertical cracks so at the very least you carve out a piece and then you have an open pit and then you can just split them out they're just again waiting to be the work's done Ace is an interesting one. Is this vitrified stone? Well, I don't think so. Okay, it's uh, especially in limestone. That's where you get your flint and your chert forming. And these make these are the tools that you'll find all over the ancient, like universally around in the ancient world. Flint, chert. These make excellent tools for carving granite and other tools as well. And I think that this is what. Uh, these are yeah, flint or chert and they're a decent size as well so handy for small arrowheads and maybe even up to fist sized uh, hand tools like larger hammers and chisels and picks as well uh, more bedding uh, cracks okay these are the interesting these are lintel stones and now for instance at uh, Puku Pakara, just up the road at the Red Fortress. There's examples of you know, the lintel stones. And you'll also see them in Saksawaman itself. But I think these are especially interesting because they seem to have, uh, unless someone's come along later, I don't think that's the case. And I don't think that they've been dug out, like so that the earthen platform underneath is resid that this seems to have been the uh, original quarry work and so they you know, put them on a platform and bang 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 the workers can go at them this one on this side seems to have tipped over the one on top much more complete the one on the bottom still has to be finished and it's sort of be convenient to have these two on top of one another because then you can get them the same size because you just yeah just hang a plumb line and follow them down and it looks like it's uh tipped over maybe that was the angle they were set at i don't think so but it looks because of a split there Think they're being tipped something going on there but uh, 
Yeah, there's another bit. Yeah, I think these have been yeah set up on the urban platform, make it easier to work. Again, just stone waiting to be quarried out. That's the Temple of the Moon, Templo de la Luna. Again, just you can see these, for even saving for the larger stones, these large splits. Again, what can you say? It's works there to be done. Again, not sure if these were piled in recent times or go back. Uh, go back. Were these um, blocks dismantled wall or, or half finished and waiting to be collected, then repiled later? Uh, because they're in that restricted area, I'd probably think that these are maybe going back again to the original site where we've got these various stones uh, storage area before they get transported. For for instance, the retaining walls here in the background um, are really different. These are like higher quality, so I think that these would have been moved to the proper sites. Very interesting one here. Uh, firstly, notice the like you have that orangey layer again. That's where it can be split off. But what we have is uh, potentially drill holes and what is it? nice place to extract the block. Keep in mind as well in the back where you can see which is clearly being worked. But there was a nice block here. Drill down, pop it out traditional style still even with the modern machines it's still basically the method that they use now you can also see the plane the strata level so we have this orangey stuff not so good on the top but you can see it can be flaked off broken off so we have those strata so we have a nice thick slab ready to go be removed quite easily and those uh, different layer of stone easy to get away with And just note the quarrying site at the back there, these are all within short distance, downhill makes it that much easier. Uh, so you get this orangey stuff here, you can see where it's been cleansed off this upper part as if I were preparing this area for quarrying next. Butts up against that very nicely quarried area already. Uh, very few cracks running through it, so we, here we can extract nicer blocks. another example these plate they're just popping up everywhere all over the area within a short distance from Saxawama and there's a rear of um, where that uh, cave with the chair is some examples so this again we're going lots of stone walls not just Saxawama but all around very nicely fit again you see the depth that the that the walls go to seems to be a double layer here and uh, the handrail there will give you an idea of the size and this is the defining size whether it's Machu Picchu, Cusco, City, uh, Saxo-Waiman and all these other sites as well because there are here and there larger blocks but uh, these could be virtually carried by a person probably a little bit too much to you know be comfortable but roll them, lever them, sled them around just again not a problem we get another example of okay we're going to build these it's already polygonal for you wedge them out remove them and you've got so much work already done just another example and you can see that it's already been worked with stone has been removed from behind okay so again big block on the ground this one uh, too partially worked split in there at that piece so you can see the natural crack already there in the back and this one seems to have you know seems to fit onto that wall so it's been you know, fallen the natural crack caused it to break out or just as easily these could be levered out uh, I mean, just this is a if you want to build polygonal this is a type of natural stone that you want around because the work is already done most or majority of the work is done those smaller blocks are there just bare by the bucket load and you know and then you get uh, larger stones for those rare megalithic examples that are there as well 
Uh, again, this stone's got those little black specks. This, these might be um, flint or you know, chert in there as well. So not just big chunks, as often you'll see small sections of flint and chert in there. And that's what I think these are. Could be. Um, uh, nicer. Uh, now the, the northern, the nice wall, big wall, everyone looks at it, sucks. Oh, well, there are stones with the orangey flecks in there, for the, but for the most part they seem to have gone out of their way to choose uh, nice grey limestone blocks to, uh, to use those. But f when you look around the rest of the site, especially on the other side, you will see these orangey um, tinged stones that are uh, with this type of coloration in the larger side as well. And they're overlooking the city. So we come back within one third of a mile or three quarters of a mile. There is so much stone still waiting to be cleansed and you can see that the site has already been worked. We don't need a big quarry pit. Um, the site itself right where the walls are is you know it's that's what the natural bedrock is of that particular area there's lots of places where there are just perfect outcrops to remove these stones and so in the case of the well, we have excellent tools for that uh, uh, this type of material I'm pretty sure that this is it's common feature in limestone and the just like Aswan Quarry with the dolerite dike running through it, those dolerite tools, the site produces them, they're right there for you. Um, yeah, so what can you say? It's just, uh, as my caddy could say, no big deal. Well, it's a lot of work you know, uh, to go into it, but um, again, these things just, with the sort of lost ancient high technology, you know, um, cataclysm sort of type crowd, they're always, making it harder more difficult they won't you know they've been to the site they run tours for health for heaven's sake they yeah um this really should be them but they love the mystery the the anomaly we can't explain this we, you know I, this is it. how did they do this how are oh, you know um well just by going around on google earth or again thanks to david for sending these collections of photos for there from there you can just start to see um yeah but uh, it's just exaggerated it's really it's it's turned it's 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 a it's a sense i call it a cold i think it's it oh uh, um and it very much follows the patterns of you know the cataclysm anyway uh mm, like now this should have been you know, the, the stuff that the, the people who go on the tours and charge people good money to sell the mystery this is what, and they've been at it for years and years and years, uh, you know, uh, just by you know, jumping on it occasionally, I'm able to find and discern all that. There's no reason that they shouldn't be able to either. I'm not uh, academic with access to, you know, the secret academic Vatican files, um, but I don't know, I can't explain it, explain it apart from that it's self-delusion and then they're charging people to indulge their delusions and pay for their travel and lifestyle. Um, but more than almost certainly they, they do know because when they are I'm just asking questions and the answers are provided and then they don't cover, cover that they demand work be done and the work is done for them and then they hide it so we'll see uh, but there's just I'm, I don't see not only no mystery I, that this explains so much and it's yeah just all within that area putting the actual site into context not just taking one photo or like you always see them standing in front of this block and they say it's 150 tons well it's 50 tons and it's, that's pretty big but it's not can you see the old school masons in the age of photography but prior to modern advanced cranes this would be no issue for them and the reality for most of the site is these man handleable very easy to to maneuver um stones links in the descriptions to those other videos but the quarrying if i tell you oh, it's impossible it's from miles and miles away and it's up a mountain 
it's just not true um, and, and it's limestone there are parts above and here where you can see andesite block which comes from about 35 k's away well that's one of the andesite quarries there are other could have come from closer but again those blocks are uh, maybe 50 kilos to 120 pounds maybe up to 150 kilos or uh, what's that, 360 pounds but just with a sledge and levers and people rolling it, yeah, it's these are not a not a problem, especially when it's a well organised civilization where they've got. So they say, well, you do you roll this movie stone around? Well, you give me twelve. You join in. You can, we'll get there together and we'll do it together. All right. And oh, but the time scale. You have to you have to think about the scale. Well, you have to think about the scale of the workers that were available to them. So if you've got a, you know, a hundred people working for a year, so the first couple of weeks they're not very good. By the end of the first month they're good. By the end of the second month they're really good at what they do. And and a hun just a hundred people working, producing, at the end of a year, they're going to have a light. At the end of a second, third, fourth, fifth year, they're going to have move a mountain uh, in that time. So that argument were, were oh, but the scale and this is this, the, the way for them to move the goalposts. They used to say, well, you can't drill this, you can't cut this. Then the, the evidence is shown to them and then it's, now they've moved to, you must make a full scale, scale replica and you must consider the scale, but they don't because, again, they, they build it up on the, you know, there's like two, or two people working across all of Egypt. Well, it's just silly. Anyway, quarrying, not a mystery, not a problem. And when you consider the scale and the size of the stones, it's even less so. So there are a couple, and I'll cover that in the, in the next or the video after, show examples of people moving larger stones than that quite easily. Manipu not just moving, but manipulating them and placing them as well. So yeah, it's another one bites the dust with this lost high tech and why don't why haven't they they've been asking the question why haven't they shown you this because it uh, ruins their business model with that sdg sgd cheers and have a good one